Now, at this present time, you can then, I mean, it doesn't matter which one of these you want to do in order. It's not like one depends on the other. Um, you can solve them completely independently at this point, okay? Who feels like, I'm not going to make you come up and do it, but who feels like they would be confident right now from this launching pad to say, yep, I know how to find the greatest coefficient or the greatest term. Hands up straight. So about half of you. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. That half of you, off you go. The rest of you, let me start to walk you through. We will begin with the coefficient just because it's simpler. Okay, there's less stuff flying around in there. Okay, if I want the greatest coefficient, okay, I want to compare this guy with the next guy, t of k plus one. So maybe I'll use a different color for this, right? So t of k plus one is the coefficient one after this one. It's the, the next one along in the line. So what happens is instead of having 10 ck, I'm going to have 10 c k plus one. It's the next one along. Okay, and then what happens to these guys, these parts of the coefficient, well, one of them is going to go up, namely this one, and the other one's going to go down, namely this one, okay? So my twos and my threes, this one that was k is going to become k plus one, it increases, and then this one here, 10 minus k, it will decrease, so that's why it's 9 minus k. There you go, okay? Now at this point here, while your brain is doing this, okay, even if you realize oh, I'm going down the coefficient line, you might as well at the same time write down the next term, the whole term, including the x's as well, okay? Because um, your brain has already sort of wired this together, so you might as well kind of take advantage of the fact that your brain has done that work already, okay? So the coefficient out the front all stays the same. Um, ta -da 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 -da. And now come the x's, here they are. So there's x times so to the power of 20 minus 3, there's going to be a k plus 1. Okay? Now that's still, here's the x, that's still the same number of x's, right? Uh, sorry, still the same number of k's, rather, because it's k replaced by k plus 1. Um, but when you have a plus 1 there, it's also going to be multiplied by that negative 3. Does that make sense? So you're not just saying plus 1, you're actually saying plus 1, like so, okay? So therefore, there's going to be 20 minus 3k minus 3. You see how those are interacting? So in fact, let's fix that up there because I don't need that in this particular spot. This will not be 20 minus 3k anymore. It'll be 17 minus 3k, all right? So when we get to working out the greatest term, we're going to use that, that guy over there uh, instead of this guy. We'll compare those two, right? Now, to remind you, what we want is to say, to find the greatest coefficient, the coefficients will grow and grow and grow and grow until some magic spot, the spot that I'm interested in, and then they will decrease, okay? So I want to know, when is that growing time, okay? When is it that the next coefficient continues being bigger than the previous coefficient, okay? This is what we're trying to do. So to solve this, it's sort of nice if we deal with these two objects together. Right? So this is where, for those of you who didn't put your hands up, right? if, you're not, if your brain isn't going like straight away to this, this object here, I want you to remember that the reason why we interact with this guy is because this is the inequality we are trying to solve. But it looks gross. There's so much common stuff on the left and right hand sides. Look at these guys. They're so common. If we divide through, we will get something much simpler. Okay? So to review, I'm going to launch you off now. Okay? Here's the kth coefficient. It's on the denominator. Here's the k plus 1th coefficient, it's on the numerator. Write them down as they are, and then start to tease out which bits are going to cancel together. Right? Um, you're going to need to write these binomial coefficients. You're going to have to write them back in factorial form, because there's no other way to work out what cancels with what. Um, so have a go at that, I'll give you a couple of minutes to get a head start, and then I'll show you my working. Once that is done and dusted, you arrive here. Okay, now be careful here. You have to watch out for negative signs and then you want to interpret what the Dickens is going on. Okay, so, and this is a lot of the problem for some of you. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to multiply both sides by this. By the way, in about three or two or three lives, I'm about to change the direction of my inequality. But this time I didn't. Why don't I have to change the direction of my inequality at this point? Because 2k plus two is gonna be bigger than zero. And that's actually, I mean, you're not going to lose any marks for not saying this, but I encourage you 
to say it because it shows that you're being care- it helps you be careful with your inequalities, okay? So this is positive, don't need to change the direction. Now I need to collect some like terms, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna subtract 2k from both sides, I'm gonna subtract 30 from both sides, oops, and there, right? I now wanna solve for k, so I divide through by negative five, which means my inequality switches around, so I end up with this. I get 28 over five here, but it might be more useful to write that as five and three fifths. Is that okay? Right, now what does this mean, okay? Well, the first line that we wrote down when we started off on this um, big, long, messy inequality, the first line that we wrote down was this. T of k plus one is greater than t of k. That's what we first wrote down, okay? So your solution to this, whatever that means, is when that first line is true. Let me say that again, right? What your solution means is this is when my original inequality is satisfied. So what are the values that work here? Because k can only take on integer values, the values that are less than five will be zero, one, two, all the way up until five, right? So whenever k has one of these values, that means that t of k plus one will be bigger than t of k. Now clearly we're interested in the biggest one of these, right? So zero, one, two, it's just gonna keep on going. Go straight to the last one, which is five, okay? If you put k equals five into here, what inequality results? t of six, that's the five plus one, is bigger than t of five. Now this clearly tells you which one is the biggest one, it's that guy. Right? Um, once you go past this, uh, this inequality is no longer true. So term seven doesn't keep on growing in its merry way, it will be smaller than t6, okay? But substituting the biggest value I possibly can get into your original inequality is the key. A lot of students are like, wait, is it five or is it six? This is how you know which one it is, okay? So now that you've identified that it's coefficient number six, you go back to your original, your general coefficient, and you pop in Six, okay, so I'm gonna get this. Um, coefficient six will be 10c6, two to the power of, 10 minus six, four, and three to the power of, six. There you go, there's your greatest coefficient.